This 400 year old book should have changed mathematics forever. This is the Swiss clockmaker Jost Berge's arithmetic and geometric progression tables. The book contains an ingenious mathematical hack that Berge called red numbers, and the design of a powerful computing device that uses these red numbers hiding on its title page. Berge's hack works by constructing an enormous table of numbers, where each number is simply the previous number times 1.0001. Starting at 1 and repeating this operation again and again, Berge computed 23,027 individual numbers, with 9 digits of precision, stopping at a final value of 10. Berge called these numbers black numbers. Each black number has a corresponding red number, which indicates how many times 1.0001 was multiplied together to compute the given black number. For any given black number on Berge's table, we can get its red number by adding together the red numbers for its row and column. Berge used dots for the digits that don't change from row to row. The black number 1.01106017 has a red number of 100 plus 10 equals 110, which means that 1.0001 to the power of 110 equals 1.01106017. Now, how is this giant table of numbers at all useful? It turns out that the mapping between the black and red numbers creates an ingenious mathematical shortcut. Let's say we want to multiply the numbers 3.191 and 2.475. Instead of working out the multiplication by hand, we can use Berge's table to turn this multiplication problem into a much simpler addition problem. First, we find the closest black numbers in Berge's tables and get their red numbers. 3.191 maps to the red number 11,604, and 2.475 maps to 9,063. We can now rewrite our multiplication problem as 1.0001 to the power of 11,604 times 1.0001 to the power of 9,063. Since both numbers are rewritten as powers of the same base, all we have to do now is add our red number exponents together, leaving us with 1.0001 to the power of 20,667. To get our final answer, we return to Berge's table and find the black number that corresponds to our new red number giving us the correct answer to three decimal places, 7.898. Notice that we didn't have to multiply anything. The only math we had to do was adding together 11,604 and 9,063. And with an extra interpolation step, Berge's table gives answers accurate to seven decimal places. But wait, there's more. Berge's table not only converts multiplication into addition, it also changes division into subtraction, exponentiation into multiplication, and root finding into division. For example, we can use Berge's table to find the square root of 5. Looking up 5 in Berge's table, we see that its red number is 16,096. So we can rewrite our problem as the square root of 1.0001 to the power of 16,096. Rewriting our square root as a 1 half power, we can simplify our expression to 1.0001 to the power of 8,048. Taking 8048 as our new red number, we can look up this value in our table to get our new black number and final answer of 2.236. So instead of taking a messy square root, the only actual math we had to do was to divide 16096 by 2. So Berge's table effectively converts roots into division. On his title page, Berge arranges every 500th value from his table neatly into a circle. Although Berge doesn't say this explicitly, this circular arrangement is likely not just about aesthetics. It anticipates the most powerful computing device on the planet for the next 350 years. In fact, with some minor modifications, we can turn Berge's cover page into this computing device. This is called a circular slide rule. While Berge's tables turn harder math problems into simpler ones, the slide rule gives us a way to solve problems without doing any math at all. To multiply 1.284 by 2.014, we find the closest value to 1.284 on our outer ring and move the starting value of our inner ring here. We then find the closest number to 2.014 on our inner ring and see where this lines up against our outer ring. Looks like it's closest to 2.586, which is the correct answer. This works following the same principle that allows Berge's table to map multiplication to addition. Each step on our circular slide rule corresponds to a red number increase of 500. It takes five steps to reach 1.284 and another 14 steps to reach 2.014. Moving our inner ring to start at 1.284 on our outer ring effectively lets us add together our two rotations for a total of 19 steps, or a red number of 9,500 measured on our outer ring. 
So the slide rule itself is performing addition with Bergy's red numbers. But since it's labeled with Bergy's black numbers, these physical additions are transformed into multiplications. Our slide rule is adding the red numbers 2,500 and 7,000 for us, which is equivalent to solving our multiplication problem 1.284 times 2.014, giving the correct answer 2.586. Division works in a similar way. To divide 73.88 by 38.57, we first scale each number by 10, since Bergy's numbers only go up to 10. We now need to find the closest value to 7.388 on our outer ring, and line it up with the closest value to 3.857 on our inner ring. We now just have to look for where the starting point of our inner ring intersects our outer ring. Looks like about 1.915. This is the correct answer. Here, the arrangement of our disks is performing subtraction, which is being mapped to division by Bergy's numbers. In these examples, we use values that line up really nicely with Bergy's numbers. This, of course, won't always be the case, and most circular slide rules have lots and lots of nice tick marks, usually allowing the user to find the number they need to two or three decimal places. So what did Joss Bergy do with his incredible new discovery? Basically, nothing. He kept his discovery mostly secret for his own work, although he did share with a friend, the astronomer Johannes Kepler. At the time, Kepler was working on the Rudolphine tables, which gave equations and tables for the precise location of the stars and planets from anywhere on Earth, an enormous computational effort greatly aided by Bergy's work. Kepler included this line in the final Rudolphine tables manuscript, expressing his frustration with Bergy's decision not to publish. But he, a hesitating man and guardian of his secrets, abandoned the child at birth and didn't raise it for the common benefit. This is why Bergy's book did not change math forever. In the 10 or so years that Bergy delayed publication, the Scottish mathematician John Napier independently made the same discovery, although with a more complex and less intuitive derivation, and published a full book of tables in 1614. Napier called his discovery logarithms. His approach and name quickly caught on, and today we call the red numbers in Bergy's table the logarithms of the black numbers. For the next 350 years, until the popularization of the electronic calculator in the 1970s, tables of logarithms in the slide rule were the primary tools used for all mathematical computation. Today, logarithms are more important than ever in mathematics, science, and engineering. If you're looking to build up your foundational math skills or pick up advanced topics like machine learning, this video sponsored Brilliant is an interactive, fun, and highly effective way to learn these topics and more. Logarithms play a critical role in the loss functions of the neural networks that power this generation of AI. And the Brilliant Artificial Neural Networks course is a great way to pick up these valuable skills. And there's even a course on large language models. Brilliant's Exploring Data Visually course is a great way to understand the key role that logarithms play in data visualization. Finally, today we treat logarithms as just another mathematical function. Brilliant's foundational math courses are a great way to learn or brush up on functions and other key mathematical ideas. In my experience, watching videos will only take you so far on these topics. You really have to do something. And Brilliant is a terrific bite-sized way to learn by doing. You can try Brilliant for free for the first 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash Welch Labs. And the first 200 subscribers receive 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.